40.3% of Arsenal's goals in the Premier League this season have come in the last seven games. But what's brought about this change in form? Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave and today we'll be explaining some of the secrets that has turned Arsenal into one of the best attacking teams in European football. Remember to subscribe if you're new, but anyway, let's get this party started. Before we talk about the changes and the new secrets of Arteta's master plan to win the Premier League. We're going to have to chat about the system from last season because that is the building blocks and the foundations that Arteta has built upon. So the overall system, the 4-2-3-1, saw a number of movements in possession. Of course, Arteta is an advocate of positional play, using ball circulation to move their opponents around and then creating overloads all over the pitch. So what Arsenal would do, they'd use Zinchenko as an inverted wing-back who'd drive inside to the defensive midfield position. Grant Xhaka consequently would move into the inside left channel and become a bit of a secundo volante, a player that starts deep but moves into the final third and becomes a bit of a target for Arsenal for cross. Is. Consequently, to maintain that balance throughout most of the season, we saw Ben White operating as an inverted fullback. So Arsenal using an inverted wingback and an inverted fullback. And there is a slight difference between those two positions. In possession, an inverted fullback stays on the defensive line, almost becoming an extra centre-back. Whilst an inverted wingback operates on the midfield line in a support role or in the forward line in a more attacking role. Like with traditional fullbacks and wingbacks, the inverted versions of the role have different levels of attacking responsibility. Meanwhile, without the ball, they're almost identical as they drop back into the back line and defend 1v1 against the opposition wingers. Nathan Ake under Pep Guardiola at Manchester City is the quintessential inverted fullback. Alexander Zinchenko is the go-to supporting inverted wing-back, whilst Trent Alexander-Arnold performs a similar role in Klopp's new look Liverpool, with both players taking up positions in the midfield line. And finally, attacking inverted wing-backs are extremely unique due to the demanding attacking requirements. In the modern game, the best example is Joao Cancelo during his latter seasons at Manchester City, who frequently operated in the inside channel or even on the last line as an inverted winger. So what that meant for Arsenal last season, Xhaka moving into that inside position, Zinchenko operating in a real central area, getting on the ball and playmaking, inverting into that central area, and a back three created by Gabriel, Saliba and Ben White. As the season moved forward, though, Arsenal faced more and more deep blocks, and Arteta needed a solution for these deep blocks. So what we tended to see was a lot more of Ben White in the final third. We'd see him interchange with Martin Erdegaard, Saka, um, on that right wing. But what that meant for Arsenal was there was a little bit more open in the transition, and teams could break down the right-hand side, but also the left-hand side, as uh, Gabriel's position was a little bit more central with Arsenal building with a two. This allowed Arsenal to really open teams up. There was a really good game with Ben White operating in a super advanced area, overlapping Saka against West Ham United. Arsenal took a surprise two-goal lead in, inside the first 15 minutes of that game, but West Ham got back into the game because of that openness in the transition. It's something that Arteta is trying to tweak this season, and he's done it, and Arsenal are scoring a lot of goals. The 4-2-3-1 has been continued, but there's some slight tweaks in positions that has led Arsenal to be far more dominant against these teams that sit in deep combat blocks. So obviously we've got a change of personnel. Declan Rice has been signed. Kai Havertz has come into the starting 11 and Kivor and Trossard are arguably become really important players for Arsenal with David Ray in between the sticks. So Arsenal's shape, the 4-2-3-1 defends, uh, you know, in a 4-4-2 block with the two wingers dropping in and Erdegaard supporting Trossard to press the opposition. But when Arsenal have won the ball, there's a lot of really interesting rotations. And I think we see more rotations from Arsenal this season than we did last season with players being even even more fluid and comfortable to interchange with teammates. Of course, that's going to come with time, players playing together, understanding each other's games. When someone drops deep, is the other one going to spin in behind and so forth. It is work in progress. But the slight tactical tweak that we've seen from Arsenal is in that defensive midfield area. So the two nominal wingers, Martinelli and Saka, still hold the width in this shape, which is different to the 4-2-4, which we're going to talk about in a minute. What that means for Arsenal is they want to create those kind of 1v1s for the two wingers to allow them to attack the opposition in a classic positional play uh, superiority overload in a 1v1 situation. But in terms of when Arsenal win the ball back from that kind of 4-2-4 shape, what we see Arsenal do now is quite interesting. Kai Havertz moves into that inside left channel and takes up that kind of granite Xhaka role. Of course, that's a goal-scoring role in Arsenal's attack and team. And Kai Havertz is a little bit better suited than Granit Xhaka in terms of putting the ball on the back of the net. 
Six Premier League goals this season isn't a bad return for the German international. We've still got to remember he is quite young and the money that they spent on him is for the future, but he's starting to really flourish in this position. Declan Rice will drop into defensive midfield um, looking to get on the ball in those deep areas. But instead of Ben White operating as an inverted fullback, he has now become an inverted wingback. So he moves into that defensive midfield position and Arsenal create a back three with William Saliba, Gabriel and Kivor. I think I prefer this role for Gabriel as the middle centre-back in build-up. At times he got caught out as the left-sided centre-back in the back three in possession as Arsenal were looking to you know, attack teams. I think kivor has got some really good mobility about him which allows him to play in that outside position similar to Saliba who's one of the best 1v1 defenders in the world. But in terms of Arsenal's build-up structure and shape what we see is some rotation that we didn't see last season. We now see at times Martin Erdegaard dropping into a deep position and getting on the ball, which consequently allows him to be deep in possession of the football, which is really, really dangerous for Arsenal. So what we see is Erdegaard dropping deep and Ben White becoming that inverted attacker. What this means for Arsenal at certain times in the game, Martin Erdegaard will get on the ball in the deep areas and start to playmake. He's almost become a roaming playmaker, whereas last season I'd say it was more of a traditional attacking midfielder that was really focused on scoring goals. Now we see Erdegaard in possession of the football, dictating Arsenal's attacks. In fact, against West Ham, he completed 109 passes, which is the most he's managed in his entire career in a single game. What that means is Arsenal are now more dangerous from deep those deep positions. Erdegaard can look for those passes uh, through to the likes of Kai Havertz or Trossard or switch the play, but overall get on the ball and make things happen in those zones. Consequently, it means that Ben White does operate in this higher position, and we all know that Ben White is a really, really good footballer and he can do that. But most of the time, he's a bit of a decoy. What he'll do is he'll move a lot off the ball, which will pin the opposition and make it easy for Arsenal to get Saka in 1v1 positions. And we've seen Saka's recent form has been fantastic. And that's because of the overall play on this right-hand side. Ben White operating as this inverted fullback, sometimes high, sometimes low, which consequently means Erdegaard drops into that high position. And then again, we all know the link between Saka and Erdegaard is absolutely fantastic from a footballing perspective. But Arsenal, are much better because of this new attacking shape. Kivor is an inverted fullback who can use his height, his speed to deal with the transition, but also be good on the ball. And Ben White is getting even better as an inverted wingback. What this means as well with the movement of Trossard is Arsenal now build in central midfield with a pentagon. Five players to overload the opposition with width in attack. A lot of movement, and that is why Arsenal tactically are scoring a lot more goals in the 4-2-3-1. So let's take a look at the third goal that Arsenal scored against Burnley. It really highlights this new structure. Ben White is an inverted wing back, Martin Erdegaard operating as a roaming playmaker, and Saka still holding the width in the final third. So Arsenal have just won the ball back. They do take a little bit of time to get into that attacking structure. It is this tiki-taka mindset. They win possession and then they move into their attacking structure using ball rotation to get there. So what we see with Gabriel in possession, uh, looking to find Declan Rice into feet. We can see Kivor in an inverted fullback position. He's going to stay on this line. He's going to become a third centre-back in this move. As, of course, we see uh, Ben White will move inside. So talking about communication, it's a really important thing in, in football when we get to these really fluid environments players need to understand their movements and they need to do the opposite such as Ben White moving inside Erdegaard needs to go high or alternatively Ben White moving inside Saka pulling and holding the width really really important and it's testament to Arteta's coaching that Arsenal are so fluid it's really difficult to describe them in pure numbers as a, a 3-2-5 let's say because of the interchange is so so good and in different moves we see different chess pieces played in different positions. But in terms of communication, you can clearly see how important Erdegaard is for Arsenal. He's clearly pointing to Ben White to get into that inverted position. As the play moves forward, we see that with Ben White moving into that inverted area and Erdegaard holding his position as Saka retains the width on the right-hand side and moves out wide. This is perfect for Arsenal. We can see that those opposite movements, one's going inside, one's going outside. Classic positional play. 
As Saliba receives possession, we can now see the structure for Arsenal. That pentagon we were talking about before. Declan Rice, Ben White inverted as a wing-back. Uh, Martin Erdegaard, Kai Havertz and Trossard moving off the line. This is so difficult to deal with. You know, from a simplistic numbers perspective there, Arsenal arguably have got a 5v3 in the centre of the pitch. Where you want to create these overloads, it's great tactics. But what that leads for Arsenal, not only can they, they play through, uh, they've got lots of options as, uh, you know, short passing, but more importantly, it's really good at winning second balls. So as we see Arsenal move forward now, the balls drop back to Gabriel in the centre-centre-back position. Again, we can see Kivor as an inverted fullback, very much operating as a back three. Ben White in an inverted position. But just have a look at Kai Havertz's movement. It's really important for this goal to stretch the opposition. You know, Kai Havertz uh, makes a forward motion, which consequently attracts the uh, right fullback away from Martinelli. It's real small details in football that mean a lot which open up space for the long diagonal switch. Again, Kai Havertz has taken the attention of that fullback, which has opened up a bit of an area for Martinelli. But the big thing that we mentioned before, that ability to have that narrow pentagon in midfield to counter press or win second balls. As soon as Gabriel plays the, the long ball up, Arsenal have got a 6v6. So they're more than likely to win the possession of the football in the opponent's half. Again, the uh, long switch, if it hits Martinelli, he's got a clear 1v1 on the fullback but he doesn't, it gets defended well. But Arsenal recover that second ball and instantly look forward. Kai Havertz turns, plays in Martin Erdegaard, and again, we mentioned before, Erdegaard is this roaming playmaker. He's roamed into the inside right channel. Ben White's holding that central position to maintain a good rest defence uh, situation. And again, Erdegaard, perfect timing of pass inside the fullback, and Saka with a brilliant finish with his right foot. So that was a really good example of the classic structure that we see Arsenal move to now. Ben White is an inverted wingback, Martin Erdegaard as a roaming playmaker. But let's take that even further. Martin Erdegaard does also take up these deep positions and gets on the ball, as we mentioned previously. And the second goal, the penalty that was won by Trossard, is a fantastic example of Erdegaard using his range and passing that we didn't exactly see these deep passes last season. And I think it's utilising Erdegaard's uh, toolkit even better having him in these areas so we pick up possession again similar thing Kivor is the inverted fullback Ben White is the inverted wingback with Gabriel in possession of the football we can see Erdegaard high in this position and Ben White's operating in that kind of new central midfield position so as the play drops back to the center center back we start to see the rotations they're now exactly on the same vertical plane Martin Erdegaard and Ben White Arteta doesn't like that so they need to have one player moving high one player moving low and in this case of course Ben White checks his shoulder sees Martin Erdegaard dropping deep to come and get on the ball to dictate the play. He is going to move the other way. He's going to become an attacking inverted wing back and get into that inside right position. As Erdegaard picks up the ball, Burnley have got a problem. You can already see Brownhill uh, pointing out the forward movement of Ben White. He's instructing the centre-back to deal with that forward motion, which consequently opens up even more space for Trossard in a second. The width is created by Saka, it's dropped back inside, and now they've got a Real problem. Trossard's pulled over. He's drawn O'Shea to deal with him, which opens up a massive amount of space for Kai Havertz to run off the ball and spin in behind the defence, receiving a brilliant pass from Erdegaard. We tend to not see Erdegaard in these positions last season. I think it's going to get even better out of the Norwegian playmaker with him dropping to these deep areas, getting on the same line as Declan Rice. Uh, the first touch from Kai Havertz is good. The little flick to Trossard, and of course, Trossard is brought down for the penalty. But that all comes from that interchange there. We saw it. Ben White starting deep, Erdegaard dropping off the line, coming to get the ball. Ben White providing that attacking thrust, drawing out a centre-back. Trossard's movement then draws the other, creates the space for Kai Havertz to spin in behind. Perfection of a through ball from Martin Erdegaard and Arsenal score. And that fluidity and the reason why Arsenal scoring so many goals is they have so many different ways of opening you up. Different players rotating, dropping, getting in possession, but it all comes from the use of an inverted wing back at right back versus last season, an inverted wing back at left back. So let's take a look at the second tactical setup that Arteta has moved to that's led to all these goals. In the big games, Arsenal has moved to a 4-2-4-0. 
Why I call it a 4-2-4-0 is because Arsenal play with two false nines in Kai Havertz and Martin Erdegaard. Defensively, they set up in that classic 4-4-2 shape. The press is in a 4-4-2 diamond. But in possession of the football, arguably they look like De Zerbi's Brighton. Two defensive midfielders, two attacking midfielders, and the two wingers holding the width of the pitch. Arsenal as well are a lot more dangerous in this shape from the wide areas, because instead of the two wingers operating super wide and playing very much as an inverted winger, they're now playing as inside forwards. So they make a lot more runs inside. And we saw that with Martinelli's performance against Newcastle in the recent Premier League game. Got an assist, but could have got two assists. And that's from very much an inside forward run that we tend to not see when Arsenal are playing their 4-2-3-1. What this means is for the opponents is very difficult to deal with Arsenal's shape and structure. We know how good De Zerbi's Brighton are from playing out from the back. Arsenal are doing exactly the same. They overload the opponent by using their goalkeeper plus the two centre-backs. The full-backs play in narrow positions at certain times but also hold the attacking width at other times. And I think that's the benefit of this setup that Arsenal can attack from a lot of different ways but a lot of that movement comes from deep, which usually catches out the top, top sides. When you have the classic winger that's not going to track back, Ben White's going to go on the overlap of Saka, or alternatively Kivo, or Alexander Zinchenko overlapping Martinelli. They're operating more as traditional wingbacks in this shape at structure. But of course, the hub of the team is Jorginho. Jorginho has been brilliant from this position, he completed more passes than any other player on the pitch against Newcastle United. Really controlled the tempo from the base. But this shape and structure means that the opponents have to step onto Arsenal. If they want to press them, they've got to squeeze Declan Rice and Jorginho in the base of midfield. And of course, Arsenal have got a big solution for that. That is the two false nines, creating a U-shape in midfield or a bit of a diamond, which usually sees them being free to a simple pass inside those channels which allows Arsenal to beat the press and get into the final third and that's exactly what we saw against Liverpool in the recent Premier League game. The opening goal in the game against Liverpool was the perfect example of Arsenal's new 4-2-4 structure and how it can cause some of the best teams in the world of football issues. We're talking the best teams, we're talking about Liverpool's press under Jurgen Klopp. As we mentioned previously, the fullbacks play a little bit more traditional in a sense that they provide the width in the final third at the right time, but more importantly, they're both involved in build-up. In this instance, though, we've got Zinchenko playing slightly higher at the top of shot, and he's going to become a really important part of the move. His positioning on the attacking midfield line is quite vital for how the Arsenal carve through this Liverpool press. So we can kind of see the structure of the two defensive midfielders, Jorginho and Declan Rice, and the two strikers or attacking midfielders that have dropped off the line, Kai Havertz and Martin Erdegaard. So as Arsenal, you know, move the ball around the back, they're trying to draw in that Liverpool press. They're going to move the ball one way, they're going to Going to move it the other, they're then going to go vertical, use a bit of width, and then they're through. So, in terms of the play, starts of course with uh, Saliba in possession, works the ball out to Ben White. What Arsenal are trying to do is draw that press. They're trying to allow you to squeeze, allow you to come onto them. So you, you're pulling them you know, a little bit further towards your own goal, which consequently makes space further up the pitch. So what we see with Ben White, simple touch, moves it back to um, Saliba, who then draws in Diego Jota. Saliba uses body really well here. Really uses body, opens himself up, finds Gabriel. Consequently, you've broken the press a little bit here, um, and you're going to coax out one of the central midfielders in Ryan Gravenberg. This is an issue, because as soon as as you take bodies out of that midfield zone, Arsenal have got an overload. We already saw they've got two centre-backs, two defensive midfielders and two attacking midfielders. So pulling out one of your opposition central midfielders as Arsenal do now with Gabriel, you've got a massive problem. We've got the two false nines highlighted in Kai Havertz and Martin Erdegaard. They've got a 2v1 on McAllister but also Jorginho is a free man as the play is played forward. Jorginho is going to instantly pop the ball forward to Kai Havertz who's got pressure on his back from the right winger but since Simply what Arsenal have done now is they've pulled the Liverpool press into a central position. We can clearly see that you've got, what, six Liverpool players nice and narrow, which consequently opens up for a forward ball to the wide area. So by kind of condensing that Liverpool press, drawing it on higher up the pitch, but also, you know, putting it into a shorter area, you create that option to instantly go forward, instantly go wide. You've broken Liverpool's press. You've got a problem now. 
you know, Arsenal are attacking, Liverpool are in a reactive position. You can see with Virgil van Dijk's reaction here that he doesn't know what to do. These new tactics, this double false nine is really causing them problems. Does he step? Does he drop? Does he, uh, you know, where does he go? And he's really caught in a halfway house here. As Zinchenko uh, carries the ball forward and cuts inside, this is where the problem is. Martin Erdegaard is absolutely free. Van Dijk then reacts to press the football, and it's far too late. Erdegaard finds Kai Havertz in behind the defence with a brilliant through ball. Uh, he's clean through, and of course it gets cleaned up by Saka for an easy tap-in. But that all comes from the possession shape and build-up. They've restricted the press, they've drawn it on, they've then gone wide, they've carried through, they've used one of their false nines to through ball to the other false nine, as the two Liverpool centre-backs don't know what to do. This happened frequently in the Newcastle game as well, but this was the best example against Liverpool in Arsenal's massive win if they want to go and win the title this season. So to conclude, what are the secrets to Arsenal's insane goal-scoring form? Arteta now has two systems. The 4-2-4 to allow Arsenal to play through the best pressing teams and the new and improved 4-2-3-1 as a plan A. The 4-2-3-1 features an inverted fullback at left-back and an inverted wing-back at right-back. This sees the shape transition to something of a 3-2-5. When the striker drops off the line, Arsenal create a central pentagon, which gives them control of the middle of the pitch. More notably, this new system features a lot of positional rotations, with Martin Erdegaard freed as a roaming playmaker by Ben White's inverted wing-back role. This gives the Arsenal captain the option to drop deep and orchestrate the attack, whilst Ben White takes up an advanced position in the inside right channel. Whilst White isn't a true attacker, his movement creates space for Bakayo Saka in 1v1s with the opposition left back. On the opposite flank, Kai Havertz usually is the one who joins the attacking lineup as a bit of a central ram deuter, or a player who largely operates on the last line in search of space, but who contributes with goals and assists. The 4-2-4, on the other hand, takes a leaf out of Roberto De Zerbi's book. Fantastic at playing out from the back, the base six outfielders plus the goalkeeper even outnumber a 4-3-3, whilst leaving the front four to go man-to-man -man in their matchups with the opposition back four. To further improve their ability to play through pressure, Arteta uses two false nines, whilst the wingers, usually Gabriel Martelli and Saka, take up more central positions as inside forwards. The beauty of this shape is that in the final third, it still allows the creation of a front five with one of the fullbacks overlapping the front four, or Declan Rice advancing whilst Jorginho controls things from the base in his classic Regista role. The development of these systems has allowed Arteta to be more pragmatic, selecting the attacking lineup that best exploits their opposition. But anyway, guys, what do you think? Will Arteta's new tactics take Arsenal to the Premier League trophy this season? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe. The initial video was over an hour long. It also features the likes of set pieces, individual player quality, and that Bukayo Saka is world class. But we're actually going to make those into other videos, so make sure you smash that button. Anyway, this outro has been a little bit long, so we'll see you next time. I've been Starman Dave. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?